Hi there, this is Elena with BlackSheep303.com. This is my first foray into the world of Chibitronics LED lights to create a light-up card. I've got a UFO that will light up on its flames and on the body with two different circuits. To start off with, I have a 55 by 55 watercolor galaxy that I created with Distress Inks, and I will do a separate video on how I made that in the future. This little earth is a graphic that I printed off of graphicstock.com and then uh, used a filter in Photoshop to change it just a hair. And I'm going to adhere this down to the lower left. I know I want my UFO in roughly the middle, and then I have a banner greeting that's going to go um, sort of diagonally on, in two different uh, angles. And when you press the battery down with the Chibitronics, which we'll see in a minute, I want the lights on the flames to light up. And then when you when you run your finger over the out of this world banner, the lights on the UFO will light up individually, kind of in a row. So that's going to involve a little bit of a tricky circuitry, which we'll get next. So to figure out how to wire this, wire so to speak, what I've done is kind of drawn a path and what is going to happen because I want these lights, so here's the here's the UFO, like where it's going to be on the card. And this is sort of the under structure below the card front that has the lights in it. So I want these lights to light up when you press down across the out of this world banner. So that's going to be here. And then I want these lights to light up and just stay lit when you, so these, so you'll press the battery down, you know, you can make the connection at the battery between your wires, the positive and the negative. These lights will just stay on and then to get these lights to go on, you'll have to press this down to get them to go in, a, in like a line to make that like do 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 effect. <laughs> So, because they're so close together, the circuits are going to cross, and we don't want that to happen. So I, I went and I marked where I wanted the lights, and then I took my little chibi lights and I put them in place with the, you know, I kind of got them into the right position with this guy on top. You know, just kind of tried to figure out, like, how is this going to work. And I drew around them. And then, so these are going to go, so the positive is going to be wired to the positive side. It's going to be a straight, straight, positive, straight piece of copper tape. Then each of the negatives on these are going to have their own individual strip. It's going to, then this there will be a piece that then will have strips across it that will make the connection down here. This is the negative circuit for these lights. And so when you push this down, the connection will be made as you go across. And so then that will, that will light these up individually. So that's one circuit. This will make more sense once I have the wire down. But then these other lights that are kind of right in the way of this circuit need to stay lit all the time. So they have to have kind of their own separate circuit. So I have a separate piece of paper. So we're going to put this piece of paper on top of the of the wire of the copper of the copper tape so that it acts as a barrier between this circuit and this circuit. Because this is just going to be a straight parallel circuit. So I have my positives going here to the positive line up here. And my negatives going here to the negative line that's down here for the other circuits. So they're connected but they won't act the same. Like these are just going to come up. As soon as you make the connection between the positive and the negative, these will just come on. These, on the other hand, because the circuit's broken down here, won't come on until you press 
the connecting piece by, by running your finger along that banner. So theoretically, <laughs> this is how it should work. So now I'm going to try to run the, oh, and I, and I positioned these the same way I did this, where I like, I figured out where I wanted the lights and then I put everything down and then I put the uh, spaceship on top of it and then I drew around the outline of the lights. So I would know where to run the tape because you want to run the tape underneath the lights. Not on top of them, under them. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> so I'm going to try uh, just running the circuits now and we'll see what happens. So a way to extend your copper tape is to cut it in half up the middle. And they even tell you that in the little instruction booklet that comes with the Chibitronic starter kit. So that is what I am doing here. It doesn't have to be perfect by any stretch, um, but it is an easy way to get uh, your tape to go further. And apparently the thinner tape is easier to make the lights light up. So that was a good idea. Now to start off with, I'm adding a flap to the lower left. That is where I'm gonna have my battery and the flap is going to have the positive connection on it, which is the top of the battery. So when the flap gets pressed down onto the battery, the positive will connect to the battery and the negative is gonna be under the battery. So that will make the connection for that spot. And then this is the flap that is going to have the area to connect our broken negative circuit to all of the individual lights up there that I'm wiring right now um, that are going to make the do 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 effect on the, on the <laughs> UFO. So I'm just running this um, straight across as I've drawn it across where the lights are located as I drew them on the little piece and down to the middle of the flap down there. And then this is the negative that I am running across the bottom as you see there. So this is the connection for just the white lights that are going on the UFO body. And now I'm running a tape just for, to each individual negative connection on each individual light, but I'm leaving a space between the strip and the strip that's perpendicular to it, the negative strip on the bottom as you can see. So it's a broken circuit at this point. It's not gonna connect. But once we put tape onto the little flap, as I'm about to do here, now you, this is where it gets a little tricky. You have to make sure it's gonna line up perfectly with the strip that's coming down from the lights. So I like flipped it over adhesive side up and then put it in place and then folded the flap down onto it to make sure that it would connect and then I folded it over a little bit on the back so it's gonna so when you press it down it's gonna connect the circuit there and that's what's gonna light up that one light and I'm gonna just continue doing that oh here I'm gonna test it out first so this, this is good so when you set down the little chibi lights the thicker part is the positive side and the pointy part is the negative side so you just have to make sure you get them that way the battery goes positive side up so I'm pressing down the circuit at the battery and you do have to burnish it down pretty well. And then as I connect that, that strip there with that piece that I just stuck on the inside, it's making the negative connection so it's lighting the light. Hopefully that makes sense. But I'm gonna continue doing the exact same thing for all five of the lights. So you can see I've got four of those strips down on the flap now. And now I'm getting the fifth one down to my fifth light. That The light's not on there yet, um, but it's that long angled one. And so now I'm gonna put the light down to see if it works. And this gets a little bit tricky. Luckily, you don't have to get it perfect. Um, the positive, you do need to sort of line that, that, that strip that's on the light with the tape. And then the negative, it doesn't matter if it's like on the end or not, it just needs to connect somewhere onto the tape. So that's pretty easy. So I got my UFO in place and I'm gonna test it out here. And fingers crossed, oh, there you go. See, so now I'm pressing down on that, that flap across the negative connection on the bottom to make them light up. So there you go, you can see. So as, I, as you run your finger across that, it's making the copper tape on the flap is connecting to the copper tape that we've put down on the base and it's making the connection and that's what's lighting those lights up individually. So that is uh, circuit one down.
Now here's circuit two. So this is for the flame lights and I've got them drawn out on my little piece of paper and, and I'm just going to tape down the paper. Now you don't want to get the tape on, well, at least I didn't want to get the tape onto the copper tape. So I kind of avoided that when I put the, when I taped down the little piece of paper. I think it's fine if it runs underneath it. I didn't know what might happen to the connection if I put it on top. So I avoided doing that. So there I'm connecting the positive to that that strip along to the left side is the positive connection on the first circuit. So I just connected my positive strip on this connection or this circuit to that strip. And same with the negative. I just connected the negative side of my, this circuit to the negative strip on that first circuit. So they are all connected together. So now I've got my battery down and you can see that when I press the battery down, the red light lights up and yet the other circuit still does its, its magic when you press down the other strip. So I'm gonna just put the other lights in place because this is the, the easy circuit really and just make sure that, that it works, which as you can see, it does. And I was pretty uh, careful to test this each one because sometimes you need to burnish down the connection point a little bit or maybe where you've folded it just to make sure that it's, it's all working well. And so there you have the circuits. That's the toughest part of this whole thing. And I'm lining up my UFO so you can see kind of the effect that will happen when it works. So to get the lights to show through the watercolor paper, I have them underneath and you can see as I'm pressing down the button, you can see the red lights pretty well through the watercolor paper. And then it's a little trickier to hold everything in place and get the white lights to line up to light up as I, as I run my finger across the out of this world strip. Um, but I do manage to get it done. <laughs> it's a little tricky. And so I'm trying to like line up the holes in the UFO with the lights, the white lights. And it gets a little tricky because it's hard to get them all on just because of that broken circuit. But as I get them on, I'm, I'm marking them on the galaxy background with that white pen. So I can see where I need to punch the holes in the galaxy background so the light will shine through. So you can see there, I've got them all marked now. And because this is kind of a big piece of paper, I couldn't use a hand punch, so I grabbed my Cropodile. I haven't used this thing in years. <laughs> and I used the small hole punch in this, it's the 1 16th inch hole punch, and I just lined that up with the white dot that I had drawn on the galaxy background and just went through and punched the holes. And so that made it super easy to punch the holes, especially into, into the inside of this five and a half inch piece of watercolor paper. So I've got my holes punched there and you can see them. And as I test them with the battery, they light up very nicely and you can see through them. So here's another tricky part. This is all the foam you need, foam tape you need to put down to keep the battery from making an accidental connection like in the mail or even when you just set it down. So you have to keep that flap in the lower left that has the positive on it from touching the battery, you know, when it's being mailed or even just accidentally, because you don't want to wear the battery out before the person, the recipient gets it. So first you need to glue the battery down. So the only thing I could get to work was Ranger Multimedia Matte Adhesive. Just make sure that if you use that, that you do not use it don't put it on the, on the tape. The tape needs to stay clear. Just put it around the tape and that'll hold the battery in place. And then you need to put two layers of foam tape around the battery itself. Like all the way, well, at least I did it on three sides. And that's enough foam tape to keep the flap from touching the battery unless you actually press down on it. Because the flap's obviously going to be closed once we get the, the galaxy background on top of this. So we have to keep, keep it from making the connection. So that's what the two layers of foam tape right around the battery do. So I put them along the bottom of the card and up the, and up par partially up the side. So you'll see there, there's two layers there. I got two layers all the way around there and going up the in between there. So everything you're seeing here is two layers as I'm pointing out. Everything else is only one layer because you don't want your card to stick too far off the lights when you have them lit. 
it gets a little weird otherwise like it seems really um, deep so that's why I, I only use the two layers around the parts that have, were kind of directly attached to the circuit so then I have one little piece at the end of the doodly do circuit <laughs> um, to keep that from touching down accidentally as well and so now it's just a matter of basically peeling off the, all the, the adhesive just right around the battery so I can, I can flip or adhere down the flap and I only did it on two sides um, and then we'll just need to uh, adhere the rest of it down to the front of the card so this is a little tricky because you need to line up the light holes as you uh, stick it down um, but it's not too tough and so then I got it all in here down and I did have some that, that was like overlapping so I did have to trim it off a little bit but that was on the right hand side not the left hand side which is the circuit side you do not want to cut off any of the circuit obviously and here I have put vellum on the back of the UFO and on the back of the flames just to cover up um, I don't want to see the entire light I just want to punch a small hole so that you see the, the little tiny LED light, but you don't see the whole mechanism around it. So basically what I'm doing is I, you can see through the vellum where the lights are. So I'm just taking a white pen and marking on the vellum in the UFO where the lights are. So I can take a 16th of an inch hand punch and punch out the holes in, in the UFO so that the light will come through and shine really nicely. And it was pretty easy. Might have been one of the easiest things to do in the whole thing. <laughs> and the hand punch works just fine on this because it's a small object. Obviously, you could use the crocodile again, but that seemed like overkill as far as I was concerned. Now, it is a little tricky to get them lined up, but I did do so. I glued the whole thing down with Ranger Multimedia Mat. Um, I did that because I wanted to have a little play. So if I needed to adjust the UFO so that the light holes were exactly over the lights um, I could do that if I used double stick tape or something I wouldn't have been able to to like sort of move it a little bit so that's why I used liquid adhesive and that would be my advice and then finally I added all these little stars that I cut out with the Simon Says Stamp um, mini hearts outline die I did this in gold and silver paper so you get the outlines and you get the insides so I kind of mixed them all up and I wanted to make it look like it was a big sort of stream of love coming off the planet. And so the connection point is that red heart in the lower left. And then the rest of the hearts just kind of fill in. And then you press over the out of this world banner to get the UFO lights to light up. And that is the completed card. And I think it's really, really cute. And I love the Chibitronics. They're so fun. Um, it's a little tricky at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's super easy. So if you have not tried Chibitronics, I say go for it. It's super fun. And whoever gets your card is going to absolutely love it. So thank you so much for watching. There is a supply list link below in the video description and on my blog. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, why don't you subscribe? It's about time. You can follow me also on Instagram at blacksheep303. And I love to hear from you. So if you want to leave me a comment with a question, suggestion, anything, please do so. Thank you so much and have a great day.